The Allports both collected and created all sorts of material. As we know, they were very fine artists, but they were also writers, they were photographers, uh, and they kept their own documents. Here's a most extraordinary document, which I don't think I'd seen before. It's the official manuscript signed by George IV and by Earl Bathurst, appointing George Arthur to be Lieutenant Governor of Van Diemen's Land, um, dated the 22nd of August, 1823. Quite extraordinary. We did in fact exhibit this in 2004, so it has been out on show. With it comes a letter from Mags Brothers, the London dealer, in 1958 saying, Dear Mr Allport, the customer for whom we'd been holding Governor Arthur's appointment has decided that he cannot afford it, and so we have sent it straight on to you herewith. We hope you will be pleased with it. And it cost Mr Allport £25, which was a lot of money, I think, in 1958. One of the ways in which Cecil and Henry Allport benefited from, your, from um, J.W. Beatty's activities was that a lot of Beatty's manuscripts ended up in the collection. And this little reporter's notebook has an extraordinary range of things in it. It has an account of an expedition to the Arthur range. But most importantly, it has in it a manuscript transcript which J.W. Beatty took down himself, taking dictation from a, 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 a reformer convict called William Thompson. And this is really quite an extraordinary thing, um, a first-hand account of a convict, as he says, career of William Thompson, who arrived in Van Diemen's Land in the ship Westmoreland in 1841 under sentence of life. This account of William Thompson's life has now been um, edited by Julia Clark and published in a very nice little book issued by the Port Arthur Historic Site. We have in the W.L. Crowther Library the Abbott album of very early Tasmanian photographs and the notebook written by Alfred Abbott that accompanies the album. We also knew that a diary of Alfred Abbott's existed somewhere. In fact, Sir William Crowther had borrowed it sometime in the 1960s and had a transcription made. And a couple of years ago, the original diary came on the market and we were able to purchase it. So it's a delightful little volume full of information, not just about the photographic activities of Alfred Abbott, but also the general activities of a young man. He was only 19 when he started writing this diary. He'd obviously written a previous diary because he writes, I may now, I think, safely consider my diary fairly launched with every pro prospect for continuance in its course sailing with me, going where I go and abiding my constant companion until some unforeseeable obstacle severs us. Morton Allport, as we know, was a very important early Tasmanian photographer and in fact when Charles Abbott gave up photography in 1859 he sold his photographic equipment to Morton Allport who then used it to very good effect. However, Henry Allport was also a photographer and this little album is of photographs that Henry Allport took on some sort of expedition or trip to the Wielangta uh, area, the forests over on the east coast of Tasmania and maybe just snapshots at the time, but now very important documentation of an area um, and a way of life that have changed quite completely.